I was 14 years old, and it was just another average night around 9 o'clock p.m. I was at my cousin's house, babysitting for the evening while my mom and aunt were out shopping, and my dad and uncle were at the movie theater. My little cousin and I were sitting in the living room, watching TV, when I started to feel something was off. A strange unease settled over me, but I couldn't quite pinpoint the source of my discomfort. As I continued to watch TV with my cousin, that eerie feeling didn't dissipate. It lingered and grew stronger. Something was definitely wrong, but I couldn't figure out what it was. So I decided to get up and go lock the back door, hoping it might ease my anxiety. Upon returning through the kitchen, I made a chilling discovery that explained my unease. In the window, I saw a disheveled and homeless-looking man staring right into our home, fixating on my cousin. My protective instincts kicked in immediately. I didn't let on that I had seen the man. Instead, I told my cousin that it was time for him to go to bed since our parents would be returning home soon and they wouldn't want him staying up late. I walked him upstairs and got him settled in bed, all the while knowing there was a stranger outside who wanted to get in. At the time, I was around 125 pounds and 5'8", and I played football for my school. Despite my relatively small frame, I felt an overwhelming need to protect my cousin. After putting him to bed, I went downstairs to the kitchen and grabbed a meat tenderizing hammer. Then, I turned my attention back to the window where I'd seen the man. He was no longer there. Panicking, I rushed to the front door to confirm that it was locked, both the deadbolt and the doorknob. They were secure. Hurrying back upstairs with my meat tenderizer in hand, I entered my cousin's room and positioned myself in front of the door. My cousin asked what I was doing, and I assured him not to worry and to keep himself hidden. I called the police and then contacted my dad and uncle, who were a 45-minute drive away. The cops were on their way but wouldn't arrive for another half hour. Then I heard the unmistakable sound of shattering glass and heavy boots moving about on the main floor. My heart raced as I clutched the meat tenderizer. I could hear the intruder downstairs, and it was a terrifying experience. I remained stationed in front of my cousin's door, urging him to stay calm and hidden beneath the covers while keeping quiet. As the minutes dragged on, I could hear the intruder's heavy footsteps approaching the stairs. My cousin's room was no more than ten feet away from the top of the staircase. I held my breath as I heard him open the doors to my aunt and uncle's room, then the bathroom. Eventually, he returned downstairs, and I heard the door to the basement swing open. Fifteen agonizing minutes later, the police arrived, bursting into the house. It turned out that the man was an escapee from a mental hospital located in a neighboring province. In the end, we were safe, but the experience was nothing short of horrifying. I was living in a split-level duplex with my ex, our four cats, and a foster black lab mix. The cats never ventured into the lower level, which consisted of a family room that I had converted into an office and exercise room, a bedroom, and a laundry-slash-bathroom. Strangely, the dog also detested being down there. I frequently felt like I was being washed, but I chalked it up to the fact that there were windows at street level given that it was a daylight basement. Two odd experiences occurred during my time there, but only the second qualifies as happening when I was home alone. To provide context, I'll share the first experience as well. The first experience was during a day when I was home alone, doing laundry with my headphones in. My ex was upstairs, deeply engrossed in a gaming session, and was completely oblivious to anything else happening around him. As I was putting my clothes in to wash, I distinctly heard someone snapping their fingers right by my ear, as though they were standing next to me, attempting to grab my attention. Yet there was no one there. At the time, I brushed it off, assuming it was just my imagination running wild, because I didn't particularly enjoy being downstairs. The second experience took place when my ex and some of our animals were out for the day visiting his family in a nearby city. I was downstairs, occupied with printing off coupons, since it was the early 2000s and smartphones weren't a thing yet. Suddenly, 
I heard the front door unlock, swing open, then close, and I could even discern the sound of footsteps on the landing. Without thinking, I called out, Hey, you're back early. After all, who else could it be? I headed towards the bottom of the stairs, fully expecting to see my ex on the landing, accompanied by an enthusiastic dog and two rather annoyed cats. However, to my utter bewilderment, there was no one there. There were no cars parked in the driveway, none on the road, and none of our neighbors were home. Upstairs, the cats remained uninterested and unconcerned. In a state of confusion, I phoned my ex, and he confirmed that he was still in the nearby city. He was somewhat unsettled when I recounted what I had heard. He hurried back home, and we decided that if he left again, he should leave the dog behind since he seemed to be attuned to something amiss and provided me with a greater sense of security. To this day, I've never experienced auditory hallucinations before or since those strange occurrences. When I was a kid, there was a funeral for a close family friend, and I really didn't want to go. My parents were pretty upset with me, but they made me stay home alone. I decided to pass the time by playing GTA 4. As I was engrossed in the game, I suddenly heard knocking at the door. Initially, I didn't think much of it, so I got up and opened the door, only to find no one there. Shrugging it off, I returned to my game. About twenty minutes later, I heard a louder, more urgent knock. This time, it startled me, making me jump. I cautiously looked out the window to see if I could spot anyone, but there was nothing unusual in sight. Curiosity got the better of me, so I opened the door again to investigate. What I saw on the other side of the fence was an all-black German shepherd, just staring at me. It was odd and a bit unsettling, but not particularly scary. I closed the door and went back to my game. But then, after another ten minutes or so, I heard loud banging and kicking at the door. This time, it made me leap out of my seat. I rushed to my parents' room to grab my dad's gun, my heart pounding in my chest. With the gun in hand, I mustered the courage to check the window, only to find that the German shepherd had somehow made its way onto my side of the fence and was now right in front of my door, just tearing at it. That experience left me traumatized, and I vowed never to stay home alone as a kid again. Fast forward to my adult years, and I decided to bring up this terrifying memory with my dad. Instead of apologizing, he burst into laughter and revealed that he had orchestrated the whole thing with a friend just to scare me. I was initially angry, but looking back, it's become one of those family stories that we all share and laugh about now. I was hanging out in my friend's apartment, and we lived in a duplex. He occupied the top floor, and I had the bottom. I was engrossed in a game of Xbox when I suddenly heard something massive crashing through the front door and into the kitchen. Startled, I got up to investigate. We threw wild parties frequently, so it wasn't uncommon for random people to drop by, but what I encountered this time was beyond bizarre. There in the kitchen stood a gigantic, hulking country boy wearing tattered overalls, gripping an enormous kitchen knife. He just stared at me as if he had stumbled into another dimension. I might have uttered something, but my survival instinct kicked in and I promptly noped out of there through a side door. I sprinted back to my apartment, locking all the doors behind me. I can't recall exactly whom I called or the sequence of events, but I waited until I couldn't hear any more movement upstairs. Cautiously, I crept back into my friend's apartment. To my disbelief, I found the big guy passed out cold on the couch. As it turned out, he was on parole for domestic abuse charges, had a few too many drinks downtown, and somehow made it to the apartment where he used to live, the same place where I, a scrawny 18-year-old, was innocently playing Black Ops 2 and enjoying some weed. It was a bizarre and unnerving encounter, to say the least. 